If you hypnotise somebody and you tell them they can't remember their name or where they're from or they can't remember anything about their own life, you never know to what extent they're really experiencing complete sort of non-retrieval of that information or whether they're sort of playing along in the way that an actor might but they can't sort of snap out of that, that they're just sort of playing a role. And, um, it's quite a common hypnotic trick to tell somebody that they can't see something that's in front of them like a chair and, um, or you make yourself invisible then you, maybe you move something around and they'll say it's sort of floating. But I told one guy that he couldn't see himself so now he's looking around and he sort of described it later like it was watching just sort of video footage. Now that's Again, that's quite interesting in terms of what you imagine that must do to someone's sense of, of identity. But you never really know whether is he really experiencing that as, as a proper hallucination or is he just sort of playing along. And you have such a wide range of experience with this kind of stuff that I think it would be very difficult to actually put your finger on what that, what that is doing to a person or what that experience is. One of the things that fascinates me is this idea of a memory palace. I, I love it. And the idea is that you, if you want to remember a lot of information, it can be anything from a, from a, you know, a shopping list to a speech to uh, a whole discipline of uh, information or your address book, you know, it can be anything, um, is you, you turn those pieces of information into things that you can visualise, into pictures, preferably things that are sort of bizarre and, and very memorable, and then you, you put them in an environment that you know very well. So if you used your home, as long as you're not changing your furniture around too much, you could use your home and you could go on a mental walk through your home and then in each room you'd put, so if you're going to, first of all you're going to go into the hallway and there's a hall stand, you can put, I mean, I've got to remember to take the suit to the dry cleaners, so you'd put an image of a bright gleaming white suit on the hall stand and then the next thing I've got to do is buy some stamps and so you know the next route would take you into the front room and maybe you'd end up in a room like this and you'd look around and you'd seem to be full of chaise long for some reason, this is not where I live. Um, the tasteful leopard print chaise long there might be the first thing you'd come across, so you'd put the next thing you have to remember on that, maybe reclined on it. Again, you'd find some funny or bizarre way of imagining it. The next thing maybe on this one, maybe you'd work clockwise around the room, things in the corners, next to things that you know won't move. And you, as long as the route is something that you'll, you don't have to think twice about, and as long as the images you make are in themselves memorable and funny or whatever and so on, um, then all you do is you just mentally wander around that thing and you know you immediately see the big white gleaming suit on the hall stand and then you walk into the room and you've got the thing next thing you know you don't have to think about those things anymore and I use it all the time I have a route up my street that you know if I'm falling asleep at night and things I need to remember to do the next day but can't be bothered to write them down because I'm falling asleep I start to plot them against shops that I know going up my road I have a mental map of central London that I'm plotting the, the history of art into because I just thought that would be a lovely thing to have a real grasp of, and it could be wines or any, anything that you've, and things with a lot of information that are just difficult to sort of sit down and learn. So in a way it's a device for stopping people losing a sense of themselves, losing a sense of what's important to them. I think so, yes. Memory palaces were used for, um, for spiritual development, you know, they weren't just used for memory. You would store experiences and you would store wisdom really in these environments that then you could wander around and, and draw from, I suppose, at will, and that really did build, build a person. It's a lovely interplay of sort of memory and personality. Mm -hmm.